Hey, hey. So today we'll be looking at how to use Sparklet APIs in Funkable. Let's dive right in. We're going to go ahead and set up our spreadsheet the way we want it. In this case, I've chosen a very simple workflow. So we have two input data points, which is input one and input two, and finally an output, which essentially sums the first two inputs. And just as always, a very key component while working with Sparklet is to name your inputs and outputs. So in this case, I've named B1 to be X input underscore input one, B2 to be X input input two, B3 to be X output underscore output. In case you haven't done this before, you can always navigate to formulas and click on name manager to add new names to your cells and ranges, edit and even delete existing ones. Once done, go ahead and save your workbook and let's navigate to Sparklight. Here, I'm gonna go ahead and click on create new API, click next, browse, click on my Funkable Excel spreadsheet. Give it a quick few seconds, roughly about 30 to 45, depending on how big the data set is and also how complex the calculations are. What's happening in the backend is Sparklet's taking your Excel file, converting all the logic into code, and that's what spits out an API. Once done, you will land on this particular view right here. I'm gonna click on view API from there. You'll see that for Thunkable endpoint is right here. I'm going to click on see API details. A couple of quick notes on this page right here is this would be our API endpoint URL right here. We'll be making use of a post request that come in handy while we start working with Thunkable as well. You also get an API playground of sorts where you can, let's say, test your API. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say four and two as input one and input two click submit, give it a second and output, you'll see that to be six. We also have a JSON view, which is something we'll use when building our Thunkable app. Here's where you can see the different layers of data points that we need to make note of. The same thing's applicable for the output as well, where we have the response data, outputs, and the actual output itself. And at the bottom of the screen, we also have a bunch of integration guides that you can refer to. I always recommend to use or test the API on external tools like Postman or Curl before you end up using it in your app directly. And that's that. Now let's just quickly jump into Thunkable. I'm gonna go ahead and log in. I've already created my account. It's free, don't have to enter your credit card details. And once you're here, click on start building. I'm gonna name my project as Sparklight. Let's choose business as the category and click create. Give it a quick second for Thunkable to instantiate your app. To start with, we're going to add two text boxes as inputs. So I'm going to go ahead and drag and drop that here, align it to the center. Let's do the same thing again one more time. This would be the second input. We'll then use a button to trigger the workflow, which is like submit the input to the API. I'm going to align that to a little bit at the center as well. And finally, we'll display the output on the label component right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and align that to in the center as well. All right, the next thing on Thunkable would be to make sure that we are naming each of these components. So I'm gonna click on the first component I have here. I'm gonna name that as input one. I'm gonna select the other input and just rename that to input two. The next component is the button. I'm gonna say instead of button one, I'm gonna say submit, rename this to say submit as well. And finally the label, I'm gonna name that as output. Instead of label, just type here as output as well. Once this is done, you can then navigate to the block section, which is really where the entire logic of our code would sit. The first thing we'll need to do is navigate all the way down to the advanced section right here. Click on the web APIs. This is where we'll configure the Sparklight API. I'm gonna rename web underscore API one to Sparklight. For the URL, I'm gonna go ahead and navigate to our dashboard once again, copy endpoint URL, paste that in right here. We don't have any query parameters, so you can ignore that. We can programmatically set the body, which is what we'll end up doing inside the block section directly. As for the headers, we'll have the content type, which is right here. I'm gonna click copy once again, and the value, I'm just gonna click copy and paste that as well. Click add, and this is where you can find the tag for content type application JSON show up. And once this is done, you can then click the submit button right there. Now the logic of our app will be triggered once somebody clicks the submit button. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that. And here you have a bunch of options. The one we'd wanna go after is when somebody clicks the submit button. So I'm gonna just click that in right there, drag that a little bit down. The first thing I wanna do is create the JSON body of our API request. To do that, I'm gonna click on Sparklight once again and say, set Sparklight's body to. So that's the component that we'll be using. I'm gonna snap that in right there. 
Then we have the objects component right here. I'm gonna go ahead and select generate JSON from object. Now, once this is done, I'm gonna go back to the objects one and click on the create object component right here. This is a little bit tricky to work with because for this, we'll need to go ahead and refer our documentation. So I'm gonna go back to our documentation and see, okay, so the request really starts with the request underscore data. That's the first parameter of the object followed by the input, followed by the input one and input two. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy request underscore data here inside the create object, you have this small gear icon that you can click, which will bring this particular undefined section right here. I'm gonna select that and paste it. Once you've pasted it, you can then drag that and snap it just right below this component right here. In order to get rid of this particular view, you can click on this gear icon once again, and that takes away the view altogether. So request data is essentially your first object. We'll have to do this two more times. The next time we'll do, let's say create object. And this time for our gear icon, we'll use the input parameter as inputs. That's the one we'll need. I'm gonna put that in right there, drag that right below here. One more time, I'm gonna say input one, which is essentially objects, create object. Let me snap that in. Here, I'm gonna say input one, snap that in down right here. I also need the input two parameter. I'm gonna snap that in right here. Don't forget to click the gear icon, otherwise those bubbles don't disappear. And there you go. You now have input one, input two, inputs and request data, essentially building your JSON object the way we want it. As for the actual input one and input two, this would be the actual text of the input one and input two text boxes right there. So I'm gonna click input one, say input one's text, drag that in and snap it right here. Let's do the same thing for input two, input two's text. Let me snap that in right there. Next, what we need to do is make the post request. And for that, once again, I'm gonna click on the Sparklight Web API component right there, select the call Sparklight's post request, snap that right below, creating the body part of it. Once the post request has been made, what we then need to do is set the outputs value. So for that, I'm gonna click on output right here, say set outputs text to, to be right inside here. Now, this could be a little tricky as well, because what we essentially need to now do is parse the JSON output, because the output of the API would come in this particular format, where output being the one where we need to start working from all the way out to outputs and then the response data. So here, I'm gonna go ahead and say, once again, go back to objects, go by get property, and I'm gonna snap that in right here. The property name in this case, we will not be starting from top to down. In this case, what we need to do is start from bottom up. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say, get property output of object and repeat this step two more times, which is essentially go back here, get property. And in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and say outputs, which I'm gonna name here. And finally, one last time, get property output right here from response underscore data. And finally, to make it all actually work, I'm gonna go ahead and say get object from JSON of the response data that we get from the API. And this is essentially what the logic of your Thunkable app would look like by the end. To test this, you can just click on this play icon for the web preview. Let's start by entering two plus five and hit submit. And you have the value there at seven. Let's try this one more time. Let's do three plus six and click submit. And you have the answer as nine. So this is how you'd end up using Sparklight inside Thunkable. This is going to be your logic. And of course you can create more complex logic and more complex output data points from all of this as well. I hope this video helped and thanks for watching.